So my last video was awesome. It's all about how to make your own texture PBR passes for materials and how to make them procedurally within Blender and export them and have them basically ready to use right out of Blender's render, uh, which is really fun. I haven't seen anyone else do that. So I'm just going to coin it as the Daniel Grove method because um, I haven't seen anybody else do that. So <laughs> I got to coin it now. So in this video, I'm going to try to keep it short. I'm going to show you how to use those different passes to make some really great looking uh, materials, PBR texture materials and some really cool tweaks and tricks with nodes and other stuff like that that you need to know if you're not really great with texturing or materials yet. Um, there'll also be some procedural stuff in there too, which will be really handy. So let's get started. Here is my most recent uh, batch of textures called Panels 7. Really cool name, right? Because this is basically the seventh one I've made. And I'm really getting pretty good at it. So I've got some basic passes here. Here are two different edge passes. I've got a height map that I exported using the mist pass. I've got random colors for each face, thick lines, thin lines, and really thin lines. <laughs> We're not going to use all these, but I am going to use some of them. So let's start by making a plane tab for edit mode, S for scale, and type in 10 in your numpad and hit enter. Then if you press the period key in your numpad, it's going to center and zoom in there. Now we're going to make a cube and move it over here with G and then shift A and make a UV sphere. G to move it over here. I'm going to size this sphere up. Oop, I'm on the 3D cursor. We don't want that. We want individual origins. There we go. And then select this cube, control L and scale it up a little bit too. There we go. So what this is, is kind of our test surface to show material as we work on it. It just makes it easier to see in a few different uh, contexts. So I do want this to be smooth. So W and then auto shade smooth by 30 degrees. Awesome. OK, so let's split this screen right down here and let's make the top one the shader editor, make a new material. I'm going to call it panels seven. There we go um, in to get rid of our side panel, get some extra room. We're going to be building a whole bunch of nodes over here based mostly on image textures. I will incorporate some procedural noises as well for animation. So first things first, shift a search, click on that, type in I am for image texture. Okay. Click open. Let's find our panel seven folder. Oh, I should have said this earlier, but there will be free download in the video description down below. Yes, completely free, no strings attached uh, for this whole set of images. I, if I can make about 10 unique ones, I'm probably gonna sell them on, on Gumroad, but this one will be free. Uh, so let's start with the basic one. What is the color layer, which really just has the outlines. Uh, let's plug it into color. Okay, pretty obvious. Uh, Shift D, let's, um, click open and open the random one. Click open image. All right, let's move it over here. Shift D. Let's open the line. Let's do the uh, let's do the thin line, the one pixel open and then shift D and move one up here. And we're going to make this one the edge, uh, the first edge one with the bigger edges. There we go. OK, so we've got four textures here. Now, what I did that I think made my texture look good in the example that I showed earlier was that I had two materials actually within one. So shift D, this BSDF, and let's make this one. Um, I don't know what to call it, uh, the, the main surface. And then this one's going to be the metal edges below that have been exposed because of wear and weathering. So this one's going to be shiny. So let's turn up metallic, turn up specular and turn down roughness pretty low around dot one. Now this one's going to be kind of the opposite. It's not metallic. So the metallic is zero specular. You can leave in the middle and roughness. Let's turn it up. So it's kind of flat and non-reflective, right? So we have two very different services. If we go to our rendered view, we can see super boring here. And then if we control shift, click this, this is previous it using the node wrangler, obviously like basically aluminum Chrome thing go on here. So back to here, boring. We got some very subtle panels going on. Already looks pretty cool. Um, and I have my one light over here, by the way, my default light is set to sun and I am using the cycles render engine, which is why it looks so flipping sweet and realistic. If I switch to Eevee, meh, looks like I'm on a PlayStation two or one and I don't use cycles much. So we're going to be using cycles. Um, and let's do a mix shader to basically allow us to mix between these two different, very different types of materials. So one is a, one is flat, one is metal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the edge image data of here, the edge as our mask. If you're a Photoshop user, you know what masks are. If you're not, you may be very confused as to what I'm talking about. Uh, but if you look real closely, this image data of the edges is basically showing the metal where the edges are. 
but not anywhere else. Isn't that cool? See how the light kind of gleams off just those areas? That's great because the edge data, if I, sh if I preview this, control shift click, it's just this. White around the edges, black everywhere else. Cool. So to get back to normal view, control shift click, this final node, there we go. All right, so we're already on a good start. Um, let's add some irregularities to this edge so it's not just super perfect um, by using a shift a mix rgb node right here which allows us to mix other image or color data on top or in it shift a moose grave texture one of my favorites plug it in there and let's put this on i think darken okay not doing much yet let's turn up the scale yeah you can see if as the frequency goes higher there's a lot more um disruption going on with our edges it's a lot more imperfect which is good let's turn up our detail all the way up and our dimension i'm going to hold shift and click and drag down to around dot just around dot two or dot three or dot four that gives it a lot of fine gritty detail now if we turn this fader down we go back to the original but as we fade it up we're introducing noise into the mix of those edges if we go all the way up it's a bit much so somewhere around half Looks pretty good. If we preview this, this is what's happening. No noise, all noise, eh, somewhere in the middle. Cool. Go back to previewing this last node. All right, so we have imperfect edges. That's great. Let's um, introduce some of these other image maps. So let's plug in random into the roughness of both of them. Let's try both first. So this is allowing some of the darker faces to be more reflective, like this little corner here. But the other ones, not so much. You see the highlight disappears. And let's, let's duplicate this also to the metallic BSDF. There we go. Cool. All right. What are we going to do with this? We're going to use it as a bump map. So shift A, search, type in BU. It's right there, bump. Plug in the normals into this normals and to this normals over here and get that image data in the height. All right, now you got this beautiful, the creases are, are bumping. That's good. That's what we want. But we got some weird noise here. This is, um, I think, due to the image. I did export these as TIFFs with 16-bit, but there's still some artifacts. Let me try the other one. I think the other one might have been cleaner. We did line one pixel. Let's do line 10 pixel. Yeah, it's a lot cleaner. There's still some artifacts. Make sure this is non-color. Makes it a little bit better. Okay, we'll just stick with that. Let's check out our cube. See how the cube's doing. By the way, if we select our cube and control L to select all the faces and then press U and reset, that will make the whole texture cover each face 100%, which looks much better and more interesting. We're getting somewhere. We need to add some more imperfections though. So let's add some dark uh, kind of dirt. And it's also going to add that, that dirt, not only to the color to give it some darkness, but also to the bump to add some really like scratched away areas. So shift a, let's make another moose grave. I know it's probably moose grave, but you know, gotta be fancy here, here, plug that into the color ramp. So we have value control over the noise and we can make it more selective. So let's drag this. Oh, we need to make a uh, mix RGB. So shift mix RGB. This will allow us to mix in some noise into the basic color of the flat, you know, the panel part. Turn up the size. Let me zoom out. You can see what's going on here. Uh, turn up the detail, turn down the dimension. That's where you get that beautiful grit and, and dirt detail. Okay, so we don't want it that intense. So let's turn this down a lot. Somewhere around there where it's just subtle. You know, it's like 1% to 2% visibility. That's usually what you like for realism. Um, I always say subtlety is key. That applies to so many, so many things in VFX and digital art. Okay, so just a little bit of dirt goes a long way. I'm going to put this down to dot one five. Now we're going to copy this data and move it down into the bump. So shift A, add a mix RGB. On my really complex textures, I have a whole bunch of chains of these. I may have four or five mixed RGBs that are basically taking from different images and mixing them into a chain, which will eventually go into the bump map or the roughness or the color. Um, and it's all just kind of adding literally like Photoshop layers into some final destination on the BSDF. Okay, so let's copy this data and plug it down here into uh, color two. And now look at this, we're adding we're adding this noise to the bump map. Let me get a good lower view here. There we go. And uh, let's go to multiply mode. So it's only darkening. So this is 0% uh, noise into bump. 
hundred percent. Let's do dot one. See what that looks like. Let's do dot oh five. This is very sensitive. The bump mixture. I don't know why. Dot oh one. There we go. Maybe dot oh two. Yeah. Cool. Now remember this noise that we're using for bump is coming out of a color amp. So watch what happens when I make this color amp more picky. Look at that. It shrunk the noise down. So this is full. That's less. Let me let me add this into the color data a little bit more so you can see what's happening. Fuller noise, selective. Cool. And you can go the opposite too. You can spread it out or thin it down. So that's why I like to have a color amp in there so we can have more control over where that how much, you know, uh, corrosion, I guess you could say is happening. Let's turn this back down really low, like dot one or something. So these corroded areas are generally going downwards and I want them to be darker, not lighter like this. So I'm actually going to invert this shift a search invert. Plug it in right there. There we go. So now our um, corroded bump areas are now darker. See that? Awesome. I like that. And this is a bit much. I might want to turn that down a little bit. Turn our scale down a little bit, make it a little bit larger noise. Cool. Now I want some color. This is super boring. So let's get some color in here by using the um, the random, uh, the random, what is it? this one right here? And let's turn these into some color values. So we're going to add this into the chain of the color data. So add random into here. And we can name these two. This is so we know what's what's going on. So this one is we're going to press F2 on that mix node and call it add noise. Oops, I had that caps on for some reason. Add uh, erosion. So I remember. Oh, yeah, that's the bump stuff. And then this one will be add color. Now let's change this to a color mix uh, blend mode. Turn it up and actually add your random values into the factor. So that's this random, you know, the, what you're seeing down here is going to control the mixing of a color. Pick a color you want. I'm going to preview my final node here to get back to normal view. And there we go. So again, uh, this black and white random values are mixing for this guy into red. I can change any color and it'll do that. If I want more control over that mixing uh, random, the, those random uh, values i can use a mix node um, let's get easier to look at color nice blue there we go so as i play with this this is making it darker which is more blue or brighter which is less blue and so on and so forth you can add some nice contrast to get some nice little sections that are blue and some that are not blue okay cool so let's preview the final result oh that's nice i like it a lot because for some reason this reminds me of total annihilation if anyone out there play that game please give me a shout out because man that game was the bomb um all right what else can we do we can add some more image textures on top of the uh, edge texture to show some more metal and i'm not really seeing a lot of metal i'm not sure uh maybe we need to play with this mixing a little bit maybe let's turn up the noise a little bit yeah just kind of playing around with things to get a better result Oh, speaking of better result, let's put an HDR in here. So go to your world setting, color, environmental texture, open. I have a whole folder of free HDRs from HDR Haven, or I think it's Polyhaven now. Awesome website. Let's get this one. And things will just automatically look much more realistic. You should probably turn off your scene light because this has light from the sun. Where is the sun? It's over there. Oh, nice God rays. This is a pretty diffuse scene, though. Let's maybe open them with some more contrast. Um, how about this one? I'll do this one. Yeah, that's nice. A little more contrast there. OK, now I'm going to add another mix RGB. I'm going to do another image texture and I'm going I'm going to find a texture of my own that has some scratchiness to it. So this is uh, this will not be included in the download, but you can find scratch textures all over online. Um, they're 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 not hard to find. OK, here's a good one. It's also 4K. Plug it into here. And what this is doing is we're going from edges with noise. And now we're going to actually use screen. 
Look at that to add some more texture on top. Now this is too flat. I want some more contrast. So color ramp, good old color ramp. That's beautiful. Nice uh, scrapey, almost painted metal texture there. Get the contrast you like. And then we can work on blending it in. So that's all the way up. That's too much. Just want to add some subtlety there. All right, let's preview the final result. So this is dot O, it's dot 083. So if we turn it all the way up, we can really only see when the light glances off of those spots, see? So that scratchy metal texture is being added into the edge texture and just basically revealing the, the metal, the metal BSDF below. Um, in those holes of the black and white image texture because that's basically it's a mask. That's how masks work Okay, so get a good mixture that you like not too much not too little depending on how dirty and worn you want your texture to look We can also add some um, ambient occlusion on the edges by using that same edge mask just in a different way so we have, we're, we're making this chain here and we're gonna name stuff um, add AO. Okay. Now we're going to grab the original edge texture, plug it into here, change this from color to multiply. And let's make sure, I think it's actually inverted. Let's see. Yeah, the edges are white. We want to flip flop that. So go back to sample error of previewing the last node, shift A, I, N, V for an invert node. Now we're inverting the edges. So now the edges are black. They're being layered on top with multiply. And that is essentially how you get ambient occlusion, although we are kind of faking it. And you can see as I turn that up and down, we get that darkening around the edges, and that's exactly what we want. We do, of course, have the metal texture, which should be being revealed in the, the edges uh, that we have control over. So we could technically give, give that a little bit of a color, but it's kind of weak. Um, it's not maybe not popping through as strongly as I would like. So why don't we use some um, and a color ramp to enhance that edging? So yeah, this edge texture is just going straight in. So let's do a color ramp for the original edge to mask in that metal. Let's preview it. So this is original. And if we make those middle parts wider, brighter, then they'll be stronger in the final result. We can of course cut them down with like that if you want to really chop it in and make it a little bit cleaner. So let's check that out. How does that look? Oh yeah, I can already see way more metallic in those crevices. You can see as the light glances off right there, it's like shiny aluminum. And we do have two layers of noise. Remember, we have the procedural noise for like the dirt. And then we have the second layer, which was that image texture, which kind of goes over everything. Like right here. If I turn that down, turn it up. This is all image texture revealing metal. Awesome. Well, a little longer than I intended, but I think there's a lot of great techniques in here that you guys uh, can have a lot of fun with and experiment with and learn new things that I don't even know. Uh, if you have some great tips for this type of work, please share in the comments down below. I love learning as well. And almost every time I teach, I end up learning. I think that's a good thing. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more content that I put out monthly and be sure to download the free uh, image textures down below. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.